Uh, I mean, I used to be CEO and VPs of about five or six different startups 15, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, as you can tell, I'm, uh, I have gray hair. Most probably the first ingredient is to have the confidence of your CEO uh, or your senior vice president if they are because we have a team of four or five different uh, senior VPs and one CEO that gives the confidence you're, you're giving, you my, uh, giving me the leeway in order to have the mandate to make things happen. That's certainly one of the first ingredients. The second ingredient is to be uh, the, the CDO um, um, this time needs to be uh, somebody who understands quite well technology, who understands business issues, who understands marketing, who understands communication because it's a gathering of a, a different expertise that make a CDO being able to discuss with these different people to understand their goal, their needs, their business requirement and tell them that digital um, will give them some good results so so they they're confident into what you're presenting to us you can convince them because you know that you understand them and so if they know that you're uh, they you understand what the, what they need uh, that uh, this is most probably one of the second ingredient that is very important i would say that the, the third uh, best ingredient is it's to have a very efficient team around you uh, the people that thinks uh, are like you and wants to push as, as much as you want uh, if you have a team that is not attached to your vision and doesn't uh, go into the same direction with this the pace of the changes that needs to happen into the business you will lose momentum and it, it shouldn't it won't work Well, I'm going to give you a, a very, very interesting example. Uh, two or three years ago, we, we've done a crowdsourcing contest in Berlin in which uh, we ask the people, should it be engineers, uh, or artists, or users, to give uh, us the idea, sketch them, send uh, pictures, some videos, anything that you would like to transform their preferred experience into a, a subway uh, or into a train. We received, um, I think it was uh, more than 200 different uh, sketches coming from different people, so they gave us some ideas of how they would like to, ex to experience their uh, venue into a train and it was very interesting so how they would sit how they would stand how they would look in through the window what colors should be used what is the texture of the of the uh, of the train is it plastic is it metal uh, um, is it slippery on, 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 on the soil and so, such things like that so it's very important for us that we've gathered those opinion because then after that you can bring that to product development and tell the people well this is how the customer embodies their experience into a train so why don't we get some influence from those guys and and build the train the ideal train that they would like to see in their city Uh, they are actually. They were. They were. They were. Uh, five or six of them were integrated into new device and, and new technology and new trains. Most probably that we will achieve um, uh, the video conferencing for uh, recruiting into our HRIS system. More and more uh, young people want to talk to individual on the phone, on Skype, uh, because they, they do, I mean, 30% of our new hires are done from mobile device. I would say change management. Uh, one of the first thing I, I've done when I came at Bombardier was to install the first prototype of the uh, HRI system. And um, to my knowledge, it was an easy piece because it wasn't a, a that type of complicated system. But uh, I didn't know how this company was uh, reluctant to change. 
because in, it, it is not it wasn't in the culture to um, to get those type of changes into the entire business so I made a mistake of misevaluating the um, leverage of change management that needed to be done in order that uh, in order that, that that tool would be accepted by the entire enterprise so that was probably one of my toughest failure That I would, I would crush as well, most probably because we're still a little bit too much attached to our IT uh, real, uh, reality. It does change, it, it, and it changed lately, but I, I guess we need to, to go into a, a, a much uh, faster pace because it, things are moving a lot faster. So we still have a lot of work to do in that direction. We are in a good direction, I think, um, uh, and, but we need some improvement. Well, normally I do have a project manager in, 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 in charge of one specific project. We hire one of different agencies, de depending on the problem. We know exactly uh, with whom we want to work with. We, we, we create a war room. Sometimes it's at Bombardier, sometimes it's in the agency. We know what we want to gain as for a result and they need to work five, six, seven days in order to get the results done. Till they don't find the results, they're still in the war room and we want to d get the results of the problem. Most of the time it is, I would say 80% of the time it is successful. Um, actually I do, um, before I was uh, chief web officer 25 years ago, I was an editorial director into a traditional media. So I'm pretty good in telling stories and writing stories. And actually my superiors are, are not used to that. And um, once a month, I'm, or once in a while, I'm writing story about the business, about where I am, where I want to go, and, and tell the people how uh, I'm managing stuff, and they love it, actually, because it's not uh, like a report, a, a fade report, or something that is very drabe, or a PowerPoint presentation. I never do PowerPoint presentation. I tell stories, and they love it actually because I give all the information I can give but I, I tell it some some uh, some sometime in, in uh, with humor sometime with emergency sometime with demand sometime with uh, a good results and stuff like that and they actually uh, uh, love it I call it rapport du front like we, we did in in, in, uh, in war and they, they like it and they and they know exactly what's going on they don't need any PowerPoint where a lot of my buses are traveling all across the planet so sometimes it's pretty tough to have a one-to-one -one meeting it, we meet once in a while but not enough so reading those stuff and sometimes they laugh at each other when they, they read it because they like it and, and uh, the message goes on